Hello everyone. Today we're beginning a series of presentations aimed at mainframe developers who are currently using green screens to develop natural programs and are planning to convert to using our GUI-based Natural One environment. Our agenda is what is Natural One? We'll describe a little bit about Natural One, uh, its reason for being, and what it can do for you. How to get hold of the installer and some best practices. This series of presentations are in bite-sized chunks, which will allow you to digest the information and view the pieces that suit your current need. So in this presentation, I'm going to cover what the software AG installer is, where to get it, and how to verify that it is a valid copy. Natural One is our Eclipse-based tool that functions under Designer that allows you to do developing of your natural code using a GUI interface. Natural One is aimed at developers who are currently using green screens, as we call them, on the mainframe, Unix or Linux, open VM, VMS or Windows platforms. It also combines the functionality of multiple tools to allow you to have a single point of development uh, using our designer tool to do coding, testing, validation, and even predict versioning, etc. And due to the fact that it's a graphical interface, it allows you to do many features that you didn't have available on the green screens and hopefully product, give you product productivity gains by using a lot of the code completion tools and so forth. So as you can see in this diagram, Natural One lives within the designer product, which is based on Eclipse. Eclipse has become an, one of the industry standards used for an in integrated development environment on IDE. Uh, and within Natural One, we have our application development. You can do application testing. There are mainframe tools to connect to the mainframe and do things that you would typically do on a green screen session. You can do construct uh, development. You can interface with Predict, um, and you can use EntireX to do, uh, you can expose natural programs as web services. So there are many things that you can do in Designer um, that are a combination of, of the multiple things you would do in a green screen session. Um, so what we'll be covering in this session are how to log into empower.software.ag.com navigate to the location where the installer resides, download the installer, and validate that the installer is indeed a valid copy of the one that resides on Empower. So first step is log into Empower, click on Products and Documentation on the left hand side, then click on Download Products, Select the version of the installer that you require for your operating system. In this case, I've selected the Windows version, Windows 64-bit version. And as you can see on the right-hand side there, there's a checksum, SHA-256. I'll come back to that in a bit, but that's how we validate that the version that we've downloaded is indeed a true version and hasn't been altered in any way. Um, once we've downloaded the install image, we will run the checksum by using this command, uh, cert util hash file, software g installer, SHA-256. That produces a, a checksum for you that you can compare to the one that you're finding in power. And right now we'll do a demonstration of how to download the product. In this part of the demo, we will do a live presentation of how to sign into Empower. 
navigate to the location of the software AG installer, download the installer, and then validate that the checksum is correct. So first of all, we'll click on login. We'll be redirected to the authorization screen. You'll enter your username and password. Once you are logged in, you'll see that you have a number of options on the left hand side knowledge center, products and documentation, contact support, etc. And we'll click on products and documentation. One quick note about Empower is that typically a customer's site has one or two main contacts that have the ability to add um, other employees of that particular customer onto Empower, onto the Empower account. And usually those folks have the ability to download software from Empower and the rest of the team will only have view access and able to create service incidents. So it is quite likely that you viewing this video might not have access to Empower to download software. The best course of action would be to discuss the download of the installer with your main point of contact uh, for your site that is registered to Empower that has the ability to download the installer. You only ha need to download the installer once and you can then share the installer amongst yourselves on uh, as needed. So it does not necessary for everyone on the site to have the ability to download the installer. So what I'm showing here today is typically something only one or two folks on a particular site can use. Usually it'll be the main contact person on the Empower account. So having said that, let's continue. Uh, click on products and documentation. Then click on download products. Then you'll see that you have a few options here. Um, Usually you don't need to request permission because typically the main contact on the Empower account has the ability to download software. Click on Software Download Center. And then again, click on Download the Software AG Installer. Now you'll see that on this screen we have two options the installer for 30 for 64 bit systems and the installer for 32 bit systems typically most systems currently are 64 bit and for the purposes of this demonstration I'll select the 64 bit release you'll see that a window pops open that gives you the option of downloading the installer for various operating systems ranging from HP Unix to Linux to mainframe but for the purposes of this demo, we will select the installer for the Windows 64 bit. Now, there's something that is a bit of a best practice. You'll see that there's a, a date that's part of the installer name. In this case, it's the, um, it's the 6th of October. Um, approximately every six months, a new version of the installer gets released. It's a best practice to ensure that you have the latest version of the installer before you start installing products. So uh, it's always a good practice to make sure that uh, before you start doing any major installations that you have the latest version of the installer. It just takes a few minutes to install to download. So make sure that you always check your installer version against what is available in Empower. On the right hand side you'll notice the SHA-256 Check some. It's always a good practice to download that, so it's busy downloading in the background now. And now the next step is I'm going to select and download the installer to my downloads folder. And that, that's running in the background as well. Once that's complete, we will then validate the checksum against the file that it was just downloaded. And in this next section, 
we're going to do an optional step where we'll validate that the downloaded Flockage installer image is a valid image using SHA-256 checksum. The first thing is to locate your downloaded installer image as well as your SHA-256 checksum file, both from Empower. Next, we will run the search util command, which is included with Windows. So it will be search util dash hash file software g installer dot exe, and then we give it the suffix of SHA-256, which tells search util that the algorithm that we want to use to calculate the hash or checksum is the SHA-256 algorithm. Once that is run, you'll see that it produces a, a large checksum, checksum number uh, which I've highlighted in yellow. Next we will edit the checksum file which we downloaded from Empower and compare the two checksums with each other. So yeah you can see I have used Notepad++ to edit the SHA-256 file downloaded from Empower and we can see the highlighted numbers compare with each other. Again, this is an, an optional step. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it gives you peace of mind that the downloaded file is indeed valid and hasn't been tampered with. So that concludes the section on downloading the installer and making sure that it is a valid image. We also spoke about some best practices of using the latest installer. Uh, so those are two best practices that we included in this section. Next, we will talk about how to use the installer. So in part two of this series, we will discuss starting the installer, creating an, an install image, and how you use that install image. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Please reach out to me if there are any questions or any comments. Thank you for your time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.